Okay, so now we come to a discussion or a more detailed discussion of the structure of atoms. And we'll continue this discussion through the next couple chapters. But we're gonna begin our investigation of atoms and their structure, or their electronic structure, by first talking about light. Now this connection may not be apparent at first, but by the time we finish this chapter, you'll understand the relationship between light and atoms and maybe why we start by talking about light. So when we think about light, we often describe light itself as being a wave. You hear the term light wave. Well, if we're going to talk quantitatively about life, we might need to, we might need to have a, a better definition of what, what exactly is a wave. You have waves in the ocean or we've heard of sound waves, but what exactly is a wave? Well, we can describe a wave very similar to just a wave in the ocean where uh, we have just uh, peaks and troughs of the wave and they're all kind of uh, in, in series. But we should be a little bit more specific in our descriptors. So there's three main characteristics about waves that we will uh, mention and go through and describe. The first is wavelength. Wavelength is defined as being the peak to peak distance or the distance just between two, uh, two points on a wave, on, on two adjacent waves that are the same. So peak to peak, or it could be trough to trough, could be somewhere or halfway up, as long as that point is the same on both waves. It's the distance between those two points. Now wavelength is given the Greek symbol lambda and we often express the wavelength in terms of nanometers when we are talking about visible light. And that'll become more apparent in a moment, simply because the peak to peak distance for a light wave of visible light is so small that talking about it in terms of meters would not be as helpful as, as a unit that's a little bit more suited for it. So nanometers are 10 to the minus nine meters allows us to talk a little more conveniently about the size of that wavelength. The second characteristic is frequency. A frequency, what exactly is that? Well, if we look at this red dot on the wave right here, frequency is simply the number of complete waves that pass any point per second. So if I just take that red dot at some point and I count the number of full waves that pass that red point, um, per second, that is defined as the frequency. Frequency is given a Greek letter, nu, it looks kind of like a V here, and frequency is often expressed in uh, one per second, because it's, it's waves per second, or inverse seconds, or hertz. Hertz is just another term for inverse seconds. And so frequency is often expressed in those units. Now, the one, final characteristic, and it's one that relates both the wavelength and the frequency to each other, but this is the speed of the wave. How fast is a wave moving? We talk about the speed of light or speed of uh, sound waves or speed of an ocean wave. Here, when we're talking about light, we give the speed of light a very specific term as well, the symbol C. And the speed of light in a vacuum, and for our purposes, just the speed of light period, is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And this is the same for all light, regardless of the wave, uh, regardless of the wavelengths, regardless of the frequency, regardless of the color or the type. And we'll talk about what we mean a little bit more by that. But this is the speed of all light, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now there's a simple equation that relates all three of these characteristics to each other, and that's simply the wavelength times the frequency is equal to the speed of light. What falls out of this equation is that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to each other. So if I have a wave that has a, a long wave length, a long peak to peak distance, then because that wave is traveling at a particular speed, there's going to be a certain number of waves will pass a given point at any time, and so that's a certain frequency. But if I have an alternative wave that has a smaller wavelength, because that wave is traveling at the same speed as the one with the longer wavelength, many more waves can pass that given point per second, and so the frequency is higher for this second wave than it is for the first one. 
So the greater the wave length, the lower the frequency and vice versa. Now we talked about not just colors, but types of light. So what do we mean by that? Well, we're most familiar with visible light, but it turns out visible light's only a small, small fraction of all of the types of light. So visible light is actually defined as being just light that falls within a particular range of wavelengths, generally between 400 and 750 nanometers. That's true, our eyes can maybe see a little bit beyond those windows, but really that's about the range of light that our eyes are able to detect. And the particular wavelength affects the color of the light. So uh, short wavelengths here in the 400 to 500 nanometer range are gonna be in the purple or blue region of the spectrum. Whereas as we get farther out to six or 700 nanometers for the wavelengths, we now get into the red region uh, and we will end up more with red light. But there's many other types of light. There's infrared, microwaves, radio frequency. So if we flip on the radio, what we're actually, uh, what the radio actually receives is a light wave. And the wavelength of the light could be all the way up to 10 to the first, which is just one meter. So that, oh, that could be a wavelength of a meter, a little bit larger than uh, I hold out my hands, but larger than you can see. Or that can range all the way up to kilometers for radio frequency. Microwaves are a little bit shorter, so your microwave oven uh, or uh, the microwave on your counter uses uh, light waves that are in the millimeter or centimeter range for their wavelengths. Infrared lights, now we're talking about micrometers or micrometers, depending on how you pronounce it, but micrometers uh, uh, for wavelengths. And then we get to the visible region, we talk primarily about nanometers, and the same for the ultraviolet region, which is generally down to about from about 400 down to about 150 um, nanometers, somewhere 100, 150 nanometers. And below that, we get into X-rays and gamma rays, really, really short wavelengths. But you'll notice that as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency increases. So again, those two are inversely proportional. Now, because we have all of these different regions of light, we use different units to describe each one. It, it makes the most sense to use nanometers when we're talking about visible light, but not as much sense to, to use nanometers when talking about radio waves. Uh, in that case, we would use meters or kilometers even. Uh, and for x-rays, we don't even use nanometers, we would now use angstroms, uh, which is 10 to the minus 10th meters. One thing to point out from all of this is a common term for light itself is electromagnetic radiation. So you'll learn about this in physics, but light itself is composed of an electric field and a magnetic field. And so we refer to it as being electromagnetic radiation, where radiation just means, in this case, uh, light. So I just want you to be familiar with that term if it comes up again. So let's, get, let's go through a specific example of, how, of light and how we would calculate some of these things. So an FM radio station broadcasts electromagnetic radiation, aka light, at a frequency of 103.4 megahertz. You could just turn on your dial and uh, listen to this. It might be uh, country music or something like that. Now megahertz is simply one times 10 to the sixth hertz or one times 10, 10 to the sixth inverse seconds. So what's the wavelength then of this radiation? We're given the equation, wavelength times frequency is equal to C, the speed of light, and we're given the speed of light. So what we can simply do is rearrange this equation to solve for wavelength. So wavelength from this is simply equal to C divided by lambda, or not lambda, nu, I apologize here, the V-like frequency. But before I substitute numbers in, I should make sure that my units are going to cancel. So I've got meters per second for C, meters per second, but I divide that by megahertz. Those aren't gonna cancel to leave me with a sensical unit for, uh, for distance. So what I need to do is convert the frequency from megahertz to inverse seconds. So I can do that using the conversion factor I'm given. I'm given. So 103.4 megahertz times, uh, in this case, 
times 10 to the sixth inverse seconds for one megahertz. That way I cancel that out and I'll come out with equals 1.034 times 10 to the eighth inverse seconds. Remember inverse seconds can also be written as just one over seconds. Now I can substitute that into the rearranged equation because the seconds on bottom will cancel out with the seconds in the meters per second from the speed and leave me with units of meters. So now if I substitute in lambda is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Divide that by 1.034 times 10 to the eighth, one over seconds. The seconds cancel. And I come out of all of this with uh, 2.899 meters. Just keeping track of my significant figures here. So that's how we would calculate the wavelength if we know the frequency and then of course the speed of light.